How to remove a watermark from an SDL file. Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to review the very popular 3D Benchy um, object. I found this on Tinkerverse, you can download it, it's free. And I'm going to show you how to modify it, how to remove the text that it's on it. And I may be doing a few other things and maybe split them into a few other videos. For now, mostly I want to focus on, on the watermark removal, which is not as easy as it sounds, uh, but could be done on SelfCAD quite easily. So let me show you. So here's the object, the way I've downloaded it from uh, Tinkerverse without any changes yet. And as you can see, the object comes down, first of all, it's flipped because uh, we use I use the Y axis over here, the height, and this has been designed using the Z as height, so I need to flip it. For that, I can simply rotate it 90 degree on the X. And this is the correct orientation now. Another thing you see over here, it comes in with an opacity of just 13. The color is different. Uh, instead of changing all of this manually, I could do it. I would just go over here, though, and reset the default. Um, so it resets everything. And the last thing what I'm going to do here is I'm going to scale it. But I need to scale so I can see what I'm doing. It's a little bit too small. Um, but I don't want it to change and kind of destroy it. So we're going to use the keep proportion option. And then I can just scale it any any number and then later scale back down without any harm okay so now that i have the object here ready uh, you can see there is some text over here it's hard to see if i turn on wireframe it shows me all of these wireframe and over here you can actually see it but it's a little bit difficult and over here so i'm going to do here is i'm going to activate the smooth mode smooth mode is something that is um, similar to round objects actually that i've shown in the previous video but round object is actually changing the geometry. This is just a visualization. Um, it makes it look, if you see over here, for example, these are sharp and after smooth, it looks like rounded, similar to round object, just a little bit different, but same concept. Um, but nevertheless, this shows me here the problem. You can see over here, these text. It doesn't look as nice. The texts are not rounded, actually. In fact, the texts are sharp, as you can see if you zoom in, but this makes it just visible to see the problem. Okay. Now, how to solve this is actually two ways you can solve it. One way is to kind of think about it like plaster over. If you have a problem on your wall, you can just plaster over it and paint over it. Um, you can do that by using sculpting, using the smooth brush, flatten brush, and try to flatten this out. I've tried it, it's working, but it, it may sometimes create issues because you have a lot of moving parts over here. If you go too close, you can kind of make itself intersect. But if you're a little bit careful, you know what to watch for, it actually just can work. But over here, I think there's a better approach. And the other way is to simply replace it, delete this entire section over here, delete the entire section and replace it. The problem, this actually is a very practical approach over here. The problem here is that it's not easy to delete. And this is more of about a selection problem. I'll explain the problem, what the problem is. So I can go over here to polygon selection. And if I select this section over here, you see it selects only this. Now, I know this is the height over here. I measured it before. The height, the inside is, the thickness is 1.5. So you see, actually, notice the outside. The thickness over here, these, the inner, the holes, is 1.5, based on my scale factor. I've scaled it. Now, the problem here is, I mean, I can go and select each of these and delete and delete these and delete all of them and think I'm doing it, actually, or even marquee select and kind of select everything. But the reality is that this selection is only selecting what you see to your naked eye, what you actually see. And if you don't see something, then actually it will not be selected. And then if I click delete, it will not be deleted. So as a fact, what you see over here, and again, this takes a little bit of time because it has only like over 220 faces. If you see over here, if I move it to the other side, you still have some faces here that will kind of the side faces. Now to go and pick all of these, even if I go again and delete, I may still be left over something. And the problem here is because I see um, it only selects what you see. Now, there is something in, in a software like Blender, something that's called X-ray mode, where if you turn something into, um, they have actually a separate tool, but in SelfCAD, it's it's uh, kind of intuitively, if you turn it this way, you see everything through, then it behaves like an X-ray mode. What that means is if I select something like this, it will select everything that has been in, in its path, even, even if I um, didn't see it because it basically it's like an x-ray problem here is you have so many small faces here that look it, i'm not going to make a clean cut and then i wouldn't be able to fill it because if you have a lot of jagged edges i'm not going to be able to fill this so easily 
So I need a way to make a clean cut and be able to use the X-ray mode. And for that, what I'm going to use here is there's two tools I can use. I can use Cut with Profile, which is a part of the selection tool. It could be used to, to select cubic selection or it could be used to make a cut. If you use it with exact selection on, it will actually cut. So I know I want to be careful not to cut into this piece because then I'm going to have some problems. I want to have a clean cut without this hole over here. And I measured it before, you've seen this is thickness is 1.5. So all I need to move it up actually is a little bit more than 1.5. So I'm going to move it up from the bottom by 2. If I move it up by 2, this is giving me a cut like this. And I, once I finalize, it will actually create a cut. And this creates a cut that doesn't split, as opposed to the other tool I'll show you soon that actually splits. It has an option at least to split. So once this is selected, basically creates a cut and it selects. What I'm going to do now here is I'm going to use split. I'm manually going to split it off. And once it's split off, I'm going to hide it away. So I'm going to use hide. Okay. So now what I have here is I have only this section. Now once I have only this section, I can go and select this object. And I can go delete this section first. So I've deleted this. And now I can turn on my X-ray mode to select. Now I still need the X-ray mode because I have the same issue. If I try to delete now like this, even if I do something like this, you'll see I still have... Once I turn it on the other side, there's still a lot of faces. Now, by the way, one thing I didn't explain here is that why you see these different colors, the inside color, because I have the uh, back face coloring on. It shows me what is inside faces. So um, that basically shows it. So if I go to the wireframe mode, all I have to do is be careful to marquee select them, not to select something from the other side. So what I'm going to do here is I'm simply going to select these, something like this, make sure I don't touch something that I shouldn't touch. And here I left over something here I have to do a little bit smaller just a little bit to play because it's closer to the boundaries and just to be careful better do it a little bit extra than destroy it and I'm not sure if I selected here everything okay I think I did everything and um, let's take a look so here I think I did leave here something still so yeah you can see something was left over here okay so now this is you see, I still have left over here something by the corner because it's too close. Okay, so now I removed everything quite easily um, because it doesn't matter if it was visible or not, it's still removed. So if I turn back the normal view, you can see we have here the outside, we have the inside from this. So all I have to do now is bring back this. I still see the inside because it's not filled. And I'm going to merge it. Now, the way I'm merging it, I use the combine feature. I cannot use Union for this because this is not manifold. Um, I will need to explain. I think I did many videos on Union. Uh, but nevertheless, this is because the way it's cut, I have the vertices. Everything is intact. I can simply merge it back. All it needs to do when I merge it, it needs to remove the duplicate vertices because the vertices, when I split them, were duplicated. And now I need to combine them. So when I use Merge, it will automatically remove the duplicate vertices and give me a message. Now. Again, this takes everything time because 218, but not too bad, just a few seconds. Um, okay, so now to remove 952 vertices, this is merged as one object. And now what I can do here is I use fill polygon. And now because everything is good, it should be able to fill it, detect this is an open surface, and make something new. And here you go. This is nicely filled. If I click polygon selection, I can select a single polygon. Everything here is clean. Nicely done. Okay. Now here is where I have a problem. So this part, I, I can use cube sele uh, selection again, but it would be very difficult because this is at an angle. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a different tool, which is the second option. It's very similar to cut with profile. It's a newer tool. I mean to cube selection, I'm sorry. It's very similar to uh, cut, with, cut with plane. It's very similar to cube selection. I mixed up cut with profile as a different tool. Um, this is over here next and not related to what we do now. Cut with plane is the same idea, but it gives me more flexibility. This has the option over here first to split the object or not. If I don't split, it will do the same as cube selection, which is basically just cut and then whatever. You can manually do whatever you need to do. Um, in most cases, you want to cut because this does not select the object. It's not like the cube selection. It selects a cube. It just splits it. You have the option to fill cuts. This will basically make them two separate objects and fill them will be two manifold objects. I don't want to do that because I'm going to merge it back later. I don't need them to be independent objects, a uh, manifold with the planes, because this will be an issue. So I'm just going to split them. But here, this section is the same section you have in 3D Sketch, where you have the option to 
choose which plane you want to use or a custom plane. I need to do a custom plane because of this angle or the problem we have. So I'm going to uncheck bottom plane. Actually, I have no plane yet. I'm going to use draw draw plane. So now I have the option to draw plane. What I need to do here is, okay, I mistakenly, uh, let's go back. I didn't position, okay, first I have to position so I can be able to draw. And now let me go back over here, draw plane. So I need to draw in two directions. First of all, I need to give it one direction. So the plane will be going in this direction. And then I need to give it the other direction going down over here. So now it creates a plane over here. If I rotate the object, you can see the plane is positioned perpendicular to this faces over here. Now I know the thickness is 1.5 from this um, text, text. So I need to offset the plane, let's say by two. If I offset it by two, it's hard to see. If you zoom in, you can see it actually cuts in over here. This is where it splits. And let's see, if I confirm it, this is actually going to split off this object at this section. And um, let's see, so this is split off. So now I'm going to click isolate. So I have only this object. And now we're going to make the same operation that I did before. We're going to go and select this section over here. Now the reason I can select them, I think I have my tolerance up a little bit. Yes, I have my tolerance up to two. If you do it zero, this is actually not flat. It's it's kind of a um, smooth surface. So if I up it a little bit, it will allow me to select this entire section. So that's why you need to up the, a little bit of tolerance. And if I click delete now, I have this deleted, but now I have to do the same process as I did before. I have to go to X-ray mode, which is in our case, self kits case, it's Y-frame mode, so automatically in X-ray mode. And now all I have to do is select this entire section. Be careful to draw one rectangle over here. You can draw just one rectangle that covers everything. And click delete. That's it. Uh, I think I did something over here. No, because you see I selected over here some faces that I shouldn't. I mistakenly clicked someplace where I shouldn't. Okay, so let's be more careful. And over here I did it. Okay, I just have to be more careful. Um, let's go from here, move up over here, and make sure not to touch these up faces over there. Okay, so now I think I'm clear. Okay, I think I did everything. So what I'm going to do now here is bring it back to object, and we are going to simply combine them again. We expect it's going to remove some uh, face, some duplicate vertices when you combine them. And okay, 873, the show successfully combined. Now all I have to do here is fill polygons to fill this hole. So I go fill polygons and let's see, and voila, this is filled. So again, it took a little bit more time, processing time than expected, but not so bad uh, because it's over 20,000 faces. So now you have basically this object the way it was, which is kind of, you see over here, it still has this box. It's actually quite smooth. It just looks like this. If I turn on the, let's say, wireframe plus mesh, you can see this is how it was, maintained everything. Uh, I could have cut more and kind of removed the entire thing, but this is the way it was um, originally, just the text over here. So now all that's left just to show you is a small tip how you can actually add text over here. And it's the same problem that it's at an angle. How do I add text at an angle? So I'm going to actually hide this away for a second or just go to the tool show. You can actually hide it in the tool. So I'm going to use the text drawing and I'm going to use here an option hide all objects so I can see what's happening. And what I have to do over here, oh, I actually did it already. It's it's rotated by 90 degree. I have to rotate it by 90 degrees. It's, it's, so it's kind of positioned next to the object. And I click to finalize. And I will still have to scale it to position it. But first, the main challenge is here is to position it onto this location. So what I'm going to do here is it will require a little bit creativity here because I need to snap it. Um, use snap option. And we're going to use the magnet option. The magnet option ma means it will automatically rotate the surface where it touches. But I need to give it a location. What should be the main origin? What should rotate? So I'm going to select this origin. Um, if I clicked correctly, I think I didn't. Manual origin policy, um, mar manu manual origin position, okay. Uh, I can't even see what I did. If I did, okay. So now I did it, actually clicked. Okay, so let's bring back this object and let's select over here where it should snap. So I wanted to snap it to this. And here you go. This is positioned correctly. You see the magnet made it rotate and the origin 
kind of gave it where it should rotate. So now all I have to do here is scale this object to fit. There's a few ways I can scale it. I can actually give it a custom direction. So where this should scale. So I can kind of draw it from here to here, kind of. So like this. And symmetry, so it scales both directions. I use this. And, oops, not symmetry. I want to use it keep proportion. So keep proportion actually doesn't need the axis. It will just scale the entire thing. Um, so something like this. Okay, I'm just going to move it up a little bit. And I need to make sure this touches the object. A little bit touches the object. So it's actually not touching the object. To make it touch the object, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to isolate for a second. And I'm going to um, select these faces, these polygons over here. Now, because I have the tolerance up, it's easy to select and tie it back. So I'm selecting it. There's an easy way to position this. So I'm just doing it kind of, um, yeah, um, spontaneous without thinking exactly what I'm doing. So I'm using local transformation, and this allows me to scale it kind of in this direction. Kind of give it out something like this. And I'm going to position it over here into this object. I mean, to show everything. Okay. So now I'm going to actually to cut this out, but I want to show you here is another trick. I don't know what happened here. Um, oh, I just moved it up. Uh, I don't know what happened. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give it a color. There's another tip that if you cut out um, self-cat's Boolean operation keeps colors. So just to make it look nice, I'm going to color this. And I'm going to select these two, give it Boolean operation, and remove these text over here. And and voila. So now let's look over here. Look, it's nicely cut out. And because it's colored, you can see it. It's nicely cut out the word self get over here. Now I could have positioned it nicer. It's not well positioned. Um, yeah, so it's just kind of spontaneous without planning. So it wasn't as nice. Uh, next thing what I'm going to do here is, uh, I think I'll make a separate video, show how to simplify this, because this has way too many faces. You can see every function takes more time. Uh, but if you're going to use an object like this for games or anything else, this is a no-no. You have to have a low poly. This this shouldn't be. You can represent something like this with way um, less polygons. So I'm going to make a separate tool, a uh, video for it. And quick thing is you can use the simplify tool, simplify object. But I have some more to show about it, so I want to make a separate video. Okay, I hope this uh, helped you something, and uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions, or if you want me to teach anything else. Uh, thank you, have a great time, bye.